Then Paul tells us what to think about. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Okay? He's told us how to overcome thoughts running in the wrong direction, and now he tells us to focus our thoughts in the positive direction. He tells us to focus our thoughts on what is real. Okay? That's the idea on whatever is true. He tells us to focus on what is serious and worthy of our thoughts. We shouldn't just be rolling out there, letting our mind wander around in fantasy land. What is right, what is just, things that are innocent and holy and clean, what is welcoming and warm, things of good reputation, things that can be used to strengthen and lift others up, and things you would want your kids to think about. And you'd be okay having Jesus look into your brain. Okay? So, question. If we're supposed to think about these things, what is the source of these things? You know, to, to, be able to, to be able to have our mind focused on these things, we need to fill our mind with these things. We need to feed ourselves with these things. And you've hit, hit on a lot of them. What we read, what we listen to, the conversations we have. You know, this is part of, part of the importance of the fellowship of the church. When you talk with Christian friends and so forth, well, the conversation should be feeding into this. And, and Paul tells us to think about such things. So this is what we've been talking about, how we can discipline our mind or focus our thoughts. Taking our thoughts uh, of these things and putting our thoughts on, taking our, our thoughts off of these things and putting our thoughts on those things. And it's, uh, how do you stop bad thoughts and focus on good thoughts? When we realize that our thoughts are on wrong things, getting them back focused on right things. A couple key things, you've got to recognize it, right? Maybe, maybe confront the Satan on it. Get out of here, Satan, type of a thing. There was an article that came across uh, one of the things I subscribed to online. It was a devotional that a woman had written. She, she, she'd been divorced, had been divorced, a single mom for quite a while. Kids were growing up out of the house, and she was relocating out of the house that she'd lived in most of her married life and as a single mom. And she was talking about how difficult it was to make that move because there were so many memories there. But she said there were good memories and bad memories. And she, as she walked through that house before moving, she, she would walk into a room and she, there, were, there were memories in that room. And she'd walk into another room and there were memories in that room. And then she related that to kind of this very thing that we're talking about. She said, we have, we have rooms in our mind. And sometimes you go in a bad room and there's lots of bad stuff in there and bad memories and things that cause anxiety. And, you know, but she said... You have to mentally choose to leave that room. And she says, what I do, she says, I actually picture myself walking out of that room into a room where there's peace, where there's Christ, where there's good memories, you know, where there's comfort. You know? So that's how, that's how she does it. She, she actually makes a mental image of, of moving out of this room into another room. 